to praise him. Hallelujah. We're going to be turning this evening to the Gospel of John. Amen. Hallelujah. The Gospel of John, the second chapter. And we will begin reading with verse number one. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I didn't know who was going to be here, but the Lord does. And so that's what I base every message on. I say, God, you're God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to try to act like I know what God uh, knows about souls, but I believe I believe in obeying God once he gives direction. Amen. Hallelujah. John 2 and 1, it states, And the third day there was a marriage. Everybody say a marriage. In Cana of Galilee, the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So the first uh, uh, thing we need to understand is they were at a marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. Wine represents, in the spiritual manner, it represents the joy that God can give. Hallelujah. I believe we not only need to be, amen, married to Christ, but we need to enjoy this experience. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, his mother, now you got to understand this mother of Jesus. She knew how he came into the world. He came in, amen, by a miracle. Nobody knew like this woman how he got here. He came by the word of God and her receiving the word of God and every subsequent son of God is going to be born again by the same word of God. That's why we need preaching. Amen. People are born of the flesh. Hallelujah. Man born of a woman, that takes care of most of us. Is a few days and full of trouble. When you're born of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, God will give you double. Amen. For all of that confusion of the first birth, he'll, he'll bless the second birth. Hallelujah. I believe that tonight. Amen. I want to give you some things to substantiate that. And his mother... Hallelujah, said, amen, they have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Amen. Hallelujah. But this woman intervened by her prayer. Amen. Jesus plainly says, I am going to do miracles. But this woman says, we need one right now. Anybody need a miracle right now? So his mother said, I don't know what he's going to, but said to the servant, she didn't look at the people that, amen, acted like they wanted to be served, but she looked at the servants because they're trained to do whatever you tell them to do. Now, if you'll be a servant, you can... Get as close to the miracle as anybody that's in this house. Amen. If you're waiting to be served, amen, you might get to the last of the line. But these guys got to actually see what was taking place. So she said, this is important, said to the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That is the premise, I believe, for every miracle. When God speaks to you, do it. When he tells you to repent, do it. When he tells you to be baptized in Jesus' name, do it. When he tells you to come to an altar and he'll fill you. Amen. And uh, praise God, many, many other miracles will take place as a result of this, this statement. Amen. Verse 6, and there were, amen, there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. That's about 30 gallons apiece. 
And Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. So we got empty water pots, which represent empty life. God says, Amen, I'm not going to create water. I've created enough water. You put the ordinary in that vessel. And I am going to change it. I am going to change what's inside of that vessel. And I, and I want you to get this. When you read the Gospel of John, every miracle without exception, amen, takes place. God does not touch anything. It is by the spoken Word of God. I don't care what miracle it is you read. There's eight listed. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is all by the spoken Word of God. And so we can glean from, hallelujah, this wonderful book of John, hallelujah, whatever he says, do it. And there's going to be a miracle following the word and obedience. How many want to obey God tonight? If I can find one or two people that just say, God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen, they do as bidden. And they filled them to the brim. I mean, they didn't just have, we're going to see, we're, we're going to try this out first. We're just going to fill it halfway up. And, no, they filled it to the top. Amen. To the brim. I like to, uh, when, when somebody brings me a Coke or a water and that thing is just clear to the top, I say, can you put any more in that? Come on, somebody. You need to leave the house of God. Till it's overflowing. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And he saith unto them, Amen. Draw out now and bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine till now. That's God. God is saving the best for last. Our best services are from tonight onward. You say, I've been in some good service. Just hang on. God saves the best, every man. But God has the best for last. Hallelujah. The Bible says, hallelujah, amen. In verse number 11, the beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Everybody say his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to preach tonight, hallelujah, amen, the beginning of miracles. When miracles really began, hallelujah, amen. I lived, I lived 20 years without seeing a miracle. But when I got in the church and God poured new wine in this vessel, it was the beginning of miracles. And I'm gonna, I don't care how much unbelief or doubt I have to wade through. I'm going to find somebody. I'm going to find somebody. That says, I still believe that God, if God can create the heavens and the earth with the spoken, He can do something for me tonight. Hallelujah. How many want God to manifest His glory? Amen. Hallelujah. And let's lift our hands and let's pray for all that are in the house tonight. God, we want to see your glory. Hallelujah. Manifest it. You are a miracle worker. You are a life changer, a heart changer. Hallelujah. We look to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the great things that you have promised, that you have done, that we are witnesses of. God, I give you praise. I need you tonight. I need your anointing one more time, God. Hallelujah. To minister to this people. 
hallelujah let someone's faith rise hallelujah and take their miracle as prayer asks and faith takes hallelujah let prayer not only be heard but let faith take hallelujah amen the miracles of god into possession and let's clap our hands to jesus one more hallelujah amen amen praise god and god richly bless you this evening hallelujah and you may be seated tonight hallelujah amen this evening amen i was uh, uh amen as i began to pray amen beautiful things happen when you begin to pray and and it's not just a one-sided conversation but god can literally open our minds amen and understand things and and get our minds going the right direction nobody can get your life going the right direction, your mind going the right direction like Jesus can. Amen. And, uh, amen, God began to start taking my mind to how miraculous, amen, our first birth was. Amen. How that out of just a little X and Y chromosome, a little C, amen, that looked like nothing. God, amen, created a brain and a heart and lungs. I don't know about you, but I never want to lose the wonder of how little things can become miraculous when God is in it. Don't despise the day of small. You need to praise God for a small miracle is what if you're looking for a big miracle you need to praise him for the small miracle i believe david stood in awe when he said this and i believe the revelation come on him when he said we are fearfully and wonderfully made we were talking to amen uh, we we really are there's there's more that we cannot see on the inside of us that that's working right now that we're taking for granted. And a lot of times we wait for help when things start hurting and getting bad. Hallelujah. We don't thank him. I think, I think we ought to thank God. That's why we thank God for food because, amen, we don't understand it, but God's taking this cheeseburger. He's taking this taco. And he's turning it into energy. But it doesn't turn to energy till it gets on the inside of you. This word of God doesn't turn into something powerful till it gets on the inside of you, till you start eating it. You can be thirsty but till you get that water on the end, till you get the is your soul thirsty for God to It's wonderful to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I've, uh, amen. I've been thinking about these things, and hallelujah, it, it was a miracle indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Of creation. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at everything that God did, the awesome wonder. Hallelujah. Amen. I still, and I, I don't make any apologies for it. Amen. I, I think sunsets are still beautiful. Sunrises, if you ever get to see one. <laughs> They're beautiful. <laughs> How many have seen a sunrise lately? Amen. And it looks like the sun's coming up, but the sun ain't coming up. The sun's been there all night long, but this world we're on is rotating. And we're thinking this way, and God's thinking, if I could just turn they're going to see the light. That's how people's night can turn into day. By turning to God. I've never, I've never lost the wonder. Oh, 
I've never lost, amen, looking at, amen, hallelujah, the, the things that God has created, hallelujah, lets us know that there is a creator with a wonderful imagination. Praise God. Amen. We see a lot of cows. We don't see a lot of elephants. But they're out there. And a cow looks a whole lot different than an elephant. But they all start out. A shrew or a field mouse starts out small. And it doesn't matter how much it eats. It's only going to get so big. It'll never attain the size of an elephant. I don't care how much you eat it. It's not going to change its dimensions. It's not going to change what it was. But when you eat the Word of God, and you get an appetite for the Word of God, it will change your nature. It will change everything about you. It will change the way you look at things. Amen. And so... So, amen, God is a creator. How many have seen the creation and have just, because Satan wants to just shove you through life so you don't see the beauty of creation and say, you think it's just cars and haywire. And, amen. Thank God for the house of God where we can cause time to stop and eternity to begin. And our, our time with God is well spent. Man, hallelujah. Amen. As I begin, as I begin to, to look at the Old Testament, amen, God records in there many, many miracles. And they aren't just for you to read about and ooh and all. Ah. Amen. It's for you to pray the same things and expect the same results. He's looking for somebody. If he did it for them, he'll do it for me. When I read the book of Acts and they got the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, I said, if he gave it to one of them, he's got to give it to me, sister. And I'm telling you, he did. And he never stops giving. And that is a miracle. And that is, I want to get ahead of myself, but that is... The beginning of miracles. When you get the miracle worker on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. More on that in just a little bit. But in the Old Testament, there were those that just obeyed God and God blessed them. And then there were others, hallelujah, that from the beginning of their experience, hallelujah, Moses had a burning bush. Amen. And the bush was not consumed. Out of here, if you light up one tumbleweed, you can have the whole thing blaze. So, I mean, but there was one bush because there was one God. And there was one fire because it represents, uh, amen, our God being a consuming fire. Though he had the ability to consume that bush by being there, he did not. I'm here to tell you, he's not here to destroy. He's here to save. He's here for... And you can read this in the book of Exodus chapter number 3. Moses, he's sitting there leaning on the staff just another day. And the Bible says he turned and goes, huh, that bush is on fire. And the Bible says, when he turned, God spake to him. If you want God to do a work in your life, if you'll turn from sin, if he can turn the world, he can turn another heart. Because we're made out of the same stuff. God bless the day when he turned your heart toward him. Man. Moses' life is broke down into three segments of 40 years. The 40, first 40 years was in a palace. Amen. 
The next 40 years was out on the desert tending sheep. And the last 40 years began. Amen. There was, there was no miracle until he turned. People are wanting miracles without turning to God. And I'm talking about doing a real 180 and turning your back on sin, on the devil, on everything that, amen, represented your past and turn to a God that holds your eternal future. Man, hallelujah. And uh, when he turned, hallelujah, God said, you're going to take my people out of Egypt. And here's, he's speaking to an 80-year-old man. All right? How many got the picture? God likes to get the glory. That's the picture. Okay? It wasn't an 18-year-old guy. All right, God. I need somebody that knows. That wasn't. He wants somebody in the church, hey, I want to testify of a miracle, but it was him. He answered. Hallelujah. And so, so, amen. That's, that's immediately he says, I'm going to need more than what I got here. All I got is a stick. And God says, all right, throw it on the ground. Then he said, pick it up. That was the second miracle. And when he picked it up, it turned back into a stick. Sometimes God's going to see, hallelujah, what you've held in your hand. If you'll throw it down, it'll change. And sometimes God allows you to pick up something that you've thrown down. And it turns into another miracle. I've known some people that put down... God said, all right, you put it down. Now you can pick it up and use it in my... Come on, somebody. I don't care what kind of thing you laid down for God. Hallelujah. Sometimes uh, it's laid down for other and other times. He said, it's going to be used, uh, hallelujah, to deliver my people. Then he said, he said, okay, that ought to, that ought to crush him at the palace down there. <laughs> That's a killer move, God. What else do we got? And he said, thrust your hand in. Bosom. And so he put it inside of there. And he pulled it out and it was leprous. And he go, Wah! He was afraid of what he saw inside of him. God said, all right, put it back in the garment. And he did. And it came out and he thought, I will never dress the way I did again. Well, God has ways of keeping miracles in the forefront of us. Amen. But not only that, hallelujah, but it was, amen, ten miracles. And, uh, amen, they were in the form of plagues. Hallelujah. But they were miracles of God where God took dust and turned it into lice. I said lice. That makes you just want to start something. Flies. Frogs, hell, hallelujah, darkness that could be felt. Come on, hallelujah. They all constituted, amen. But my point is this, and we're going to move on here, hallelujah. But it was the beginning of miracles when God, hallelujah, encountered him. And he turned, hallelujah, and he began, hallelujah, to be, hallelujah, mindful of God's kingdom. Can I tell you, and I want to tell you, amen, I could tell you of a lot of miracles that God did seemingly for me, but it was for the kingdom. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's for the kingdom. I said it's for the kingdom. So some will understand we still serve a miracle working God. We still are in the age of the supernatural. Oh, clap your hands to Jesus. That was the beginning of miracles. Hallelujah. And so, 
Amen. You, you go on, and I just, this may sound like a Bible study, but I want, I want these things to, to stay with you. Is that okay? Amen. How many have read about Elijah? And, uh, amen, the man that followed him was Elisha. All right? Amen. Praise God. Now, hallelujah, God, amen. And, and, and let me just say this about Moses. Let me just, amen. After that, Moses, amen, he, after, after he got out, he, God showed him a tree. And he put that tree in the waters and made the waters that were bitter fresh. God's got to show us a tree called Calvary. But they couldn't hang around there. He had a rock that followed them. And Paul even uses this illustration in 1 Corinthians 10 where it said they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. For 40 years, they got water out of a rock that followed. It followed them. This is why Jesus could point to that and talk about himself, the rock, Christ Jesus, and say these signs shall follow them that believe out of their belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Amen. But here's, amen, hallelujah. Come here, brother. Johnny, come here. You are, hallelujah, you are Elijah. Give it up for Elijah. Elijah. Elijah was hairy. Amen. Elisha was bald. God uses all kinds of different folks. Like that new hair. Have I done enough, sis? Will it stay there with that hurricane? <laughs> Look at that humility this guy has. Aren't you glad I didn't pick you out? Amen. But here is Elijah. And Elijah has eight miracles. And he represents the Old Testament. All right? Elijah. Give it up for, amen, Johnny Elisha. Got the Holy Ghost. Got baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I didn't choose him. God chose him. And here is, I want you to get this, and we're going to go a little further and let these Great men of God, be seated. Amen. But, amen, Elijah, amen, Elijah means, hallelujah, amen, Jehovah is my God. Or the creator is my God. Whereas Elijah means God is my salvation. Can I tell you, when Jesus came, he became Jehovah and the Savior. Jesus literally means our creator, our Jehovah, became our salvation. The one that did the miracles through these men is living in those that have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, the be- and I just want to touch on this, and I'm going to let them be seated. You can be seated. Hallelujah. But they both had a miracle of resurrection, which is raising the dead. I'm not talking folks that are sick. People that respond to a thermometer. I'm talking about people that are dead. Hallelujah. Because the only hope for the dead is God. And it ain't over when the grave says it's over. Come on, somebody. Because Old Testament said, hallelujah, by faith, O grave, where is thy sting? Come on, somebody. Jesus took the stinger out. He conquered that thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. So, hallelujah. Pardon me, dear. Let me help you. But I say, praise the Lord. I got to pick on people that won't get. 
That'll be here next Wednesday. So, amen. Here is Elijah and Elijah's beginning of miracles. Hallelujah. He shuts up the heavens. So it doesn't rain. But Elisha's first miracle. Hallelujah. And this was the beginning of miracles. He watched Elijah. Amen. For years without one miracle for himself. He said, I want a double portion. I'm not looking at the cities we've been through. I've been, I've had my eyes on you, man of God. And I want twice as much. So at the end, stay with me here. But at the end of that man's ministry, he says, All right, if you see me go up, as he said, This will happen. And the Bible says that mantle fell down. Everybody say that mantle fell down. And here was the mantle of Elisha. Better ready to use your imagination. Amen. He had been taken. He bypassed death. A fiery chariot came down. Picked up one and left the other one. Said, I got a work for you to do. And I can see that unblinking eye of Elisha. It turned into a dot. And then all of a sudden, that dot started coming out. He go, he's coming back. But it wasn't him. It was the mantle. And it come down out of the sky. And he grabbed it. You know what it represents? It represents the Holy Ghost. Coming from God himself. And the beginning of miracles took place when it fell. And he got a hold of it. And he went to the river, to the water, and he said, where is the God of Elijah? The God of Elijah is going to be your God now. I'm not going to stop the miracles. And his first miracle took place at the water. Can I tell you, my first miracle took place when I went down in water in Jesus' name. And God gave me a... Up to that point, there wasn't a whole lot happening. But I'm telling you, I felt clean. And then the Holy Ghost came down. Woo. And you talk about, hallelujah, amen. Speaking in tongues is the sign that God has filled you with living water. Come on. Just like we're praising God in church tonight, we're going to praise God in heaven forever. You're going to be... When you get the Holy Ghost, that's the tongue you're going to be talking with on streets of gold. Paul defined it in 1 Corinthians as the tongue of angels. Hallelujah. Angels talk in tongues. Amen. Are you glad God understands English, Espanol, and Swahili, and But we all get the universal language. Doesn't matter what nation you come from. What unifies us is the same Father. And the same blood. And the same language. Who gave it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Jehovah who became a Savior. Hallelujah. Visited us. And filled us. And it was the beginning of miracles. I saw people get the Holy Ghost, and I said, you know, if you'll do it for them, do it for me. Then they told me, 
read the Acts of the Apostles. And you know what? I read it. And I said, man, these people are tongue talkers. And these people are baptized in Jesus' name. And in the second chapter, these people are worshiping to the point that the onlookers, the spectators, said, these are drunk. So if you walk into a church and nothing's happening, and you don't hear tongue talking, and you don't see worshipers that are drinking new wine. They didn't act that way until they started drinking. I said they didn't act that way until they were filled with the new wine. And God puts new wine in new bottles, new lives, so both can be preserved. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, Elisha, and Elijah are contrasted. Hallelujah. But God puts both names together of what he is. Hallelujah. Now, amen. The last miracle of Elisha, amen, Elijah, was him going from earth to heaven. Amen. The last miracle recorded for Elisha was when they buried Elijah. Hallelujah. Amen. He had 13 miracles. Looked like he wasn't getting twice as much. Don't feel sorry for anybody that goes to heaven. Pity those that don't. But he was buried and it looked like, amen, that's it. We're not going to hear about Elijah anymore. And so they take Elijah. Amen. Who was Elijah? You were Elijah. Come here, Elijah. Hallelujah. Now you have performed 13 miracles and you are dead. You're in the grave. Lay down. Hallelujah. Oh, man, this guy's got it. Amen. Except for this right here, okay? All right. Brig and Mortis does that well. <laughs> amen. That shows people that, amen, people that are dead. Come on. Now, he's dead. Hallelujah. But there's evidently some still life in him because, hallelujah, here come the Moabites and they invade the land. How many know the story? Hallelujah. And one of their comrades, hallelujah, this guy here died in battle. And he was a Moabite. A Moabite is a Gentile. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's us. Not a Jew, but an enemy. Enemy in our mind. By wicked. Come on, you can read about us in the book of Ephesians chapter number 2. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Enemies in our mind by wicked works. We were fighting against God. We were in a fight losing. No miracles. No peace. No hope without God. And so these guys, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They didn't want to dig a grave. So they found a grave. And it wasn't by accident. That here was Elisha's grave. There wasn't somebody say, hey, over here is Elisha's grave. He's looking for the 14. Come on, this right here. I don't believe anything happens by coincidence. You're not here by coincidence. That man didn't get put in that grave by accident. Amen. You're dead. Yes, sir. All right. You're dead. Okay, you and you. Hallelujah. You ready for this, Johnny? Amen. <laughs> Suck it up, bud. Hallelujah. Pick this guy up. Amen. <laughs> Come on, dude. You help. Get over here. Help. All right. Yeah. Hey, hey, can do it. Now put him on there. And as soon as he lands on there, amen. He gets up out of that grave. You do. That's you. Get up. I said, get up. You were dead, but now you're alive. It does matter where you're buried. 
It does matter whether you come out of the grave by where you're buried. Hey Amen. You all right, brother? All right. Dead man can't feel anything. But... <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, that was the last miracle which represented the New Testament. Now, when you get, God brings you to an apostolic church. It's not by accident. Everybody remain standing. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of a sudden, you feel something start squeezing your heart. I can remember that. That big old hand of God, and he could have crushed me. But he squeezed out tears. And I started repenting because it was the goodness. It was the miracle of repentance. It was the miracle that caused me to turn. And I said, oh my God. Hallelujah. This isn't just another church building. This is like Jacob. And I didn't even know Jacob. Hallelujah. I said, this is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. God is here. And I gripped the back of that pew and I started repenting. Of, nobody gave, nobody was, amen, turning to the book of Romans, showing me where I need, and where Peter, amen. My Savior, amen, started leading me to repentance. Hallelujah. The miracle of repentance is a miracle, hallelujah, that happens to everyone that is going to be saved by the Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I came back and they preached water baptism in Jesus' name. And let me tell you something. When I went down in that water, I had been baptized before. I didn't even use the argument. That I've been baptized before. Because it didn't change me. There was no miracle. There was, I didn't feel any clean. I just tell you. Amen. I had a pair of boots and I stuck my apricot brandy back in my boot. Then I had about three fingers of Colombian and I put it in that boot. If you don't know what that is. You don't need to know. And I walked out of there unchanged. But when I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sin, he washed me. He cleansed me. He gave me the answer of a good conscience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All doubt about the power of the blood had been dissolved by the blood of Jesus. I believe, hallelujah, that the blood dissolves doubt. Hallelujah. Amen. And who else can perform that supernatural operation but God himself? Where God takes someone and the pastor, he just uses a pastor. I'm just an instrument in God's hands. But it's God that reaches in there. And by the time I say in Jesus Christ's name and bring them up, the hand of God has washed away all sin. I'm telling you, God can take 20 years, 50 years away in a, in a moment's time. And I, I read about the Holy Ghost. I saw people talking in tongues. I heard people talking in tongues. And I said, if God will do that miracle for them, he'll do it for me. Woo! Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I can remember praying and having one eye open and watching that guy get the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I was half focused. Because I thought, what is he doing? It just takes faith. 
you got to repent, you got to ask, and you got to receive. Come on, sir. how many believe it's that simple? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just stop and just say this. Let me just let me just take another miracle. Sister Carissa, hold up your hand. Hallelujah. They were sitting on the third pew right there. Hallelujah. And they wanted a miracle. Remember that? And Brother Smith was sitting next to her. And they said, we want to come at Brother Weir. And they faithfully drove 70 miles to every prayer meeting. And then back after service, after fellowship until Friday, Saturday, hallelujah, whatever services. They said, we need to sell our house. We have done. And I could see the frustration and the concern. We've got to sell this. And it's never happened before or since. But I told them, I said, how much do you need? And they said, we need $150,000. They were sitting right there with the Kriuses. They were sitting, I think, they were sitting right behind them. Just a casual talk. And I said, someone is going to come to you with a paper sack with $150,000 in it. Amen. What would you do? And she goes, well, I'd sell the house and we'd get another one. I said, okay. And my wife looked at me and she goes, you know what you just told her? <laughs> I said, I said, well, yeah, but, you know, we're in the house of God. and Great things happen here. I'm talking, they were faithful to church service. Thank God for faith. Come on, somebody. They were servants. Hey, as soon as they got here, what do you want us to do? And it's still there. Amen. Hallelujah. And they missed Wednesday service, Brother Gwen. And I said, where are the Smiths? They never miss service. And so we called them, and she's sitting here crying. And she's a... She is just beside herself. She says, Brother Charles, we were getting ready for church, and a man came by our house. And he says, I want to buy your house. How much are you asking for it? And they looked, and they said, $150,000. He goes, wait a second. He went out to his truck, came back with a paper sack, and $150,000. You want to know why? Because God wants you in the house of God. And you can't get jealous about everything. All right? You can't get jealous. But I said, oh, God, I could use $100,000. But not for me. I said, God, I'm going to pay off this church. And I said, God, if you did it for them, you'll do it for me because God's no respecter of person. After that took place, God started dropping money. And I said, God, this ain't for me. This is so we can be in a church that's faithful. Because everybody sitting on the pew has a blood that has purchased them and has bought them. I'm preaching this. What God did for them, He'll do for you. He'll do for me. God is no respecter of persons. And I said, God, if you'll do that, then you'll do it for me. And you know what? One night, I got the Holy Ghost. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. And I started jumping up and down. I'm glad the ceilings were high. Because I was reaching for the stars that night. I'm telling you, I was excited. Amen. How did you know I began to speak with other tongues? As the Spirit gave me utterance. Come on, somebody. I started shouting. Let me tell you, I've been talking in tongues for four because that rock has followed me for these 40 years. It's wonderful to have a testimony of the people of God. For 40 years, that rock has followed me. He's faithful. He'll be there. All you had to do was speak to the rock. Ask him for water. Amen. And I'm closing with this. 
Amen. The musicians that come. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You've got to have the miracle of repentance, the miracle of a new heart. Hallelujah. And the miracle of the Holy Ghost. Because this qualifies you for the final miracle of God for the church. That's the rapture. Where God visits this earth for the last time. The final miracle. Amen. You know, you can have a lot of different miracles. And they not qualify you for the last one. But you repenting. You being baptized. You receiving the Holy Ghost. Will qualify you for the final miracle of the church. When God himself shall descend from heaven. With a shout. He's excited to take his church home. I said he loves to see you shout. And he's coming back with a shout. And we're going to know his shout. Because he knows our shout. He knows our hallelujah. And the last miracle defies all other miracles in my opinion because of the billions of people that have lived, hallelujah, from Adam to that moment, hallelujah, that are buried, that are alive, and amen, throughout this globe, God knows wherever they're not forgotten. I, I said they're not, just like Elisha wasn't forgotten. God said, I want this generation to know it does matter where you're buried. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And it's the beginning of miracles for anybody that repents, gets baptized, and gets the Holy Ghost. Because God is going to gather every soul that has repented of their sins. That's the cross. Has went to his tomb and it's empty. If you want an empty grave, you got to go to Jesus' tomb. Hallelujah. I said that's the best burial plot. Hallelujah. There is. Hallelujah. He'll let you borrow his tomb just like he did. Woo. Amen. And receive of the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost, if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, it's going to quicken your mortal body. Romans 8, hallelujah, by his spirit that dwells in you. The Lord knows them that are his. Does anybody want so qualifying miracle? Hallelujah. You're in the house of a God that is still doing miraculous things. Hallelujah for the lives of people. Hallelujah. Amen. You'll begin to journal. That's where the miracles begin, Moses, when you turn. That's when the miracles begin when the Holy Ghost mantle fell from heaven, Elisha. And that's where the Holy Ghost miracles begin. Hallelujah. In your life and mine. Let's find a place to pray right now. Anybody want the Holy Ghost? Anybody feel God's hand breaking you to an altar? It represents His cross. It represents, hallelujah, the chosen place of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It should have a drawing, amen, attraction to the soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to look upon it and see a Savior that died so we could live, that suffered so we wouldn't suffer for eternity. Wore a thorn crown 